We're going to talk about the three ways of solving systems of equation. And the main thing I want us to focus on today, one, is why we would use each method, because there's, there's reasons to use each one. And two, we're going to look at how to solve using substitution and elimination, the steps it takes. So yes, I'm aware that the lines on these are slightly off, but let's go ahead and open up for graphing. When we use this method is when, I don't even know how to put this into words, but for me, it's when I can see the lines by looking at the equations. So when, when the equations are like so easy, you can just create the line. So really, I think of graphing as when it's easy to use the equations to graph both lines. I'm going to say the lines because sometimes there's three. So it's best to use graphing when the equations really are easy. And when I look at the two equations in this example, they're both already in y equals mx plus b form. The first one, we have negative 4 as our y-intercept. And its slope is positive 3 over 1. In the second equation, we start with a y-intercept of 2 and a slope of 1 over 1. And what we want to remember is that the graph has to be really clear. We have to see where both lines cross a single point because where they're crossing is our answer. And in this case, we're crossing at 3, 5. So that's my answer, 3, 5. The second method we're going to talk about today is substitution. And when we use this method, when one of the equations is solved for x or y, or can be changed to be equal to. So when I think about this method, when I look at the example that's here, do you see the first equation is solved for y? And the second one is not. It's in standard form. We would take this and we're going to plug it in for y here. So let's rewrite this as negative 5x plus negative 2x plus 3 is equal to negative 4. So substitution is when we're taking one of the equations that solve for just one variable and we're taking that and putting it into the other equation for that variable. We're substituting it in. Notice what variable is left in this now? Just the x. So we're going to solve this and we're going to get our x. Because remember, we want our answer to be an x-y pair. <clears throat> Why do you guys think I put this parentheses here? What's inside of the parentheses? Everything that I took from up here 
I put in the parentheses and I always use parentheses because it makes it really clear. In this case, this equation had a plus y, but this up here started with a negative two. And by using parentheses, I'll make sure I don't lose my negative. And I just made that a habit, whether it's positives or negatives or not. Whatever I'm substituting in, I always put it in a parentheses just to make sure I get the whole part. So now we're gonna simplify, and we have negative five x and negative two x, which is gonna become negative seven x plus three equals negative four. I'm gonna subtract three from both sides, and I get negative seven x is equal to negative seven. I'm gonna divide by negative seven. and x is equal to 1. I'm not done though, I have to go and find the y. And I can put this 1 into either one of these equations where the x is, and then I'm going to solve for my y. I'm going to choose the first one because I feel like it's easier. It would work either way though. So y is going to be equal to <coughs> negative 2 times 1 plus 3. Negative two plus one, I'm sorry, plus three, I'm getting the answer in my head already. Y is equal to one. So this ordered pair is one comma one. If we put these two equations on a graph, they would cross at one comma one. You guys were given two white pieces of paper. I want you to find the one right now that's titled substitution. And we're going to pause here and do some substitution practice before we move on to elimination. I'd like you to look at problem number one on this paper. And problem two, do you notice that they are, one of those is solved for, this one solved for y, this one solved for y, down here, down here. But then when you get down to seven and eight, they're not. Actually, for number seven, I would probably use elimination, not substitution. We'll talk about the why in a few minutes. Let's look at number eight. Because remember, a reason to use substitution is that either one of the equations is already solved for one variable, or it can easily be solved for one variable. When I look at this equation here, I can easily solve this for x. So if I rewrite the second equation, x minus 2y equals 11, and I add the 2y to both sides, I end up with x is equal to 2y plus 11. These tend to be solved for y because y equals mx plus b is such a famous equation. But if you solve for x, it works as well. And that's why I wanted to start with number eight because I just solved the second equation for x. And now I can take this part and I'm gonna plug it into this equation where the x is. So negative seven times two y plus 11 minus 2y is equal to negative 13. I don't know with how big I write if I'm gonna have enough room to solve all of this on this piece of paper. I have to distribute first. I'm gonna put a little box around this to keep it separate. So this is gonna become negative 14y minus 77 minus 2y equals negative 13. I started writing that without the negative. <laughs> I have negative 14y and negative 2y that are like terms. When I combine them, I'm going to get negative 16y minus 77 is equal to negative 13. Our next step is going to be to move that negative 77, right? 
What's the opposite of negative 77? Yep. So I'm going to add 77 to both sides. I get negative 16y is equal to... I'm not going to trust my muddied mind. Is it 64? Oh, that makes sense because 16 is going to divide into it. And 64 divided by 16 is 4. So in our xy pair, we have that y is equal to 4. Negative 4, thank you. And then I can go back to either one of the original equations and plug negative 4 in where y is, and we're going to find our x. <clears throat> I'm going to use the equation that solved for x because that'll make it simple. X is equal to 2 times negative 4 plus 11. Negative 8 plus 11. And X is equal to 3. So this is 3 comma negative 4. That's a substitution method. It used to be my favorite. I think I've shifted over to elimination now, but... I like this one because you can kind of play with things and you're taking pieces and plugging them in and solving the puzzle. Okay, so I'm going to stop here and give you guys some time to practice numbers one and two. You're solving for x and y using substitution method, okay?